YouTube, yes. Today is a very special video because today is the video that we talk about the new successor sequel to Camp Cretaceous, that being Jurassic World Chaos Theory. This sees the Nublar Six, as they are now called, six years, ironically, later. I'm sure they did that deliberately. Maybe. I don't know. We have two trailers. We have lots of images to go over here, as well as something I think I may have discovered while looking at the trailer. So, all of that to come. But first, let's talk about what the new Chaos Theory entails. Well, the first trailer, we'll just quickly skip through it, shows a little bit of a recap about the uh, Nublar 6 returning home, that being Yaz, Sami, Ben, Darius, Kenji, and Brooklyn. This being a bit of a cliche of the Jurassic World franchise, a, a news cast telling us the story beforehand we saw it in Dominion, we saw it in Fallen Kingdom, and now we're seeing it in Chaos Theory. Uh, but it just catches the audience up to speed. If they haven't, you don't need to remember the bionic dinosaurs and the mind control. Yeah, all that weird stuff. Ignore that. They just survived Jurassic World and, and now they're, they're alive. It's fine. It has a little bit of a hint towards the story of Chaos Theory, that being that six years later, they're being hunted down. By who? They don't no, and that's pretty much it. And before we get into the trailer, one of the major complaints that the community had about this series was that none of the characters ever felt like they were in danger. Even though they had Toro and, you know, some other icon like Big E.T., Spinosaur, Smilodon, all that jazz was in those six seasons, I think it was, or five, sorry, five seasons, and uh, none of them. I mean, we had a fake out with Ben, who died. Somebody. However, Chaos Theory seems to put your worries to rest by killing off Brooklyn in the first few seconds. <laughs> this being a very highly contested and contentious subject whether Brooklyn's actually dead. Personally, at the end of this, we'll go over everything, but I don't think she's dead. I think she's being captured. She was on the trail of something. Anyway, so Ben shows up, Darius, they go on a hunt. They talk about this dark web, this dark Jurassic, where I'm assuming this is probably the black market for dinosaur selling and trading of DNA and this is what they sort of go into. A bit like with Dominion you had it with Claire and Owen they discovered the underground black market for I don't know selling dinosaurs and there was a dinosaur ring in there. So because of this they decide to get the rest of the crew together before anything untoward happens to them. This image by Netflix Dopo Scuola which I think is Italian showing Ben and Bumpy uh, hugging. So somehow Bumpy managed to get out or off the island. I think it was Nublar. I don't think they, uh, Bumpy ever went to Manticorp. So somehow Bumpy survived uh, the pyroclastic flow and everything of Fallen Kingdom. Uh, maybe it was, you know, taken with the Lockwood Manor estate when Biosyn took all of those, or not Biosyn, sorry, I don't know, you know, those, the poachers, whatever, they took Bumpy and then Bumpy got released. Even though Bumpy was never in Fallen Kingdom, possibly it was, it would explain why Bumpy is here now and how she got off the island. Other dinosaurs that are making a return are the Atrociraptors, and these two in particular bear a stunning resemblance to Tiger and Panthera. I think it was. Or red, I'm not too sure. It, there was three sort of orangey white ones and then a white one, which was ghost, I think. But these seem to be the same raptors that we've seen in Malta. So somehow, they've been transported all the way back to America. I don't know, I think we're in LA or somewhere like that, probably. Another dinosaur making its debut in the Jurassic franchise is one that I have never heard of. It is the Beckel Spinax, which is sort of like a concavenator. It has the little uh, hump on its back, and it's here. Don't know why, I think maybe it's possible that it had a toy uh, releasing with Mattel, and that's why it's here. But nice to see some other representation of dinosaurs, and I'm sure there will be a very small niche of people who will be very happy to see it. Big E.T. is actually here too. Not Rexy, but Big E.T., which is very interesting, making uh, their way from Manticorp Island. So we're going to have to learn. There's a lot to catch up on on six years of the Camp Cretaceous Chaos Theory lore. And then we also have a very reminiscent shot of the T-Rex with the flare and Alan Grant. You had Claire and the T-Rex and the flare and the high heels. And now you have Darius. Not with the flare, because I'm assuming they've beaten that horse to the ground. Uh, we have a, a taser with the Allosaur chasing. So it could be possible that 
this is how they are getting the dinosaurs to move somewhere, as we saw with the Baryonyx. Or it could just be that the Allosaur wants to eat Darius. I don't know. Redditors are very happy about this rivalry that these two will share. But this is not a normal Allosaur. No, this Allosaur is the same one that we saw in Battle of Big Rock. And there are two main reasons I think this. If we take a look at this shot in the trailer, we have a Pachyrhinosaurus, which has never, I think, featured in any Jurassic uh, movie or animated series. So this is its debut. And it gets attacked by an Allosaur. Why or how do we know it gets attacked by an Allosaur? Well, we kind of see the side jaw profile of something attacking it. This, I believe, is the first encounter Darius has with that Allosaur. And if you look around, this place kind of looks very similar to the camping grounds in Battle at Big Rock. So in my humble opinion, I think this is the same Allosaur that has been causing havoc. This is probably a follow-up to Battle at Big Rock, where a team with the National Wildlife, or that, that dinosaur preservation uh, that we saw in Jurassic World Evolution 2, the wildlife and uh, conservation people, have been called to sedate and move this Allosaur off. Hence the reason why we have a Pachyrhinosaurus. I think by changing this to Pachyrhinosaurus, they've tried to get people off the scent as this being the same place as Battle of Big Rock. The second reason, and the most compelling reason I think that is the same Allosaur, is its eye. The Allosaur in Battle of Big Rock had a blind eye. It went cataraxy, you know, it went white and glazed over. And there's very few dinosaurs in the franchise that are Allosaurs and also have one eye that is a uh, glazed over like this guy. I mean, Toro, I think maybe had one. And we saw that, you know, Camp Cretaceous had Toro, the villain throughout the whole thing. This time, maybe it's going to be this Allosaur. And this shot, I think, comes maybe episode two or three partway through the Chaos Theory, because I think this is the second time that Darius has encountered this Allosaur. The first one being at the uh, campsite where he was called to and then it attacked the Pachyrhinosaurus. And this one being the second time because he recognizes it. Just before this scene, we have this with Darius, a slow-mo recognition of that Allosaur being taken away. So this is probably the second time that these two have seen each other. We now have something from a film franchise, the Battle of Big Rock Allosaur, making its way into the animated series. I'm seeing more ties, a more thought out plot coming from the Universal team, which is good because like I said, at the very start of Jurassic World, it felt to me like they were laying down the tracks as the train was coming. But now they're having a little bit of a breather with this next movie that's gonna be coming out in God knows how long. And they're sort of tying a couple things together. If you've ever spent any time in the Jurassic World lore, or Jurassic Park lore, it's a mess. It honestly is. And I think now they're like, okay, well maybe we take the Battle of Big Rock Allosaur and put it in with this. So this is probably gonna be a long-term villain, sort of anti-villain, you know, it's not really its fault. It's a wild creature, but Darius and them are gonna have a history. Now, before we get into the Brooklyn and the main story that's going to be involved in Chaos Theory, I want to talk about this, the Dino Times. This is a magazine, an in-game, I was going to say in-game universe, in movie or series universe, meet the miraculous survivors of the Jurassic World catastrophe in this exclusive celebrating the anniversary of their return. Sammy Cattle Rancher, Dino Wrangler. Sammy Gutierrez lived with her parents on a Texas ranch before Camp Cretaceous. Ever the optimist, she remarked, at least, uh, at least I was already used to wrangling being animal. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll stop that. There's really not much different between a longhorn and a triceratops, if you think about it. Back at home, Gutierrez maintained that positive attitude by staying busy. I have my own ranch now. And my girlfriend, Yaz, and tons of pies to bake. We, I don't know, I think she's got a major part to play, but I'll go into this later. Kenji, cool kid finds new family. Kenji Khan has declined to comment on his father's incarceration. All that matters in my new family. They're the ones who always had my back. If you remember, uh, Kenji's dad was the main villain, I guess. He was the owner of Mandacorp, the ones doing experiments on the dinosaurs. Uh, the Nublar Six have been instrumental in Kenji's return to normal life, from his relationship with Brooklyn to his best friend, Darius. All I want to do is chill, you know? I've moved out somewhere peaceful, started my climbing school. All is good in Kesa de Kenji. And Darius, dino nerd turned hero. 
Darius Bowman never would have expected a shy, nerdy kid from Oakland could become the leader of the new Blast survivors. Back at Camp Cretaceous, I had to learn to trust myself and my friends to make it through. It was a terrifying experience. But what they were doing to those dinosaurs at that facility just wasn't right. Of course, that's talking about Manticore. Somebody had to do something. Since its return, Bowman has traveled all over the country, giving talks about dinosaur conservation and has worked with the Department of Prehistoric Wildlife. Ben, brave soul against all us. Ben Pingus had perhaps the most dramatic metamorphosis as a result of his experience at Nubla. Again, for me, when I watched Camp Cretaceous, I didn't really believe Ben's, like, going from wimpy kid to all of a sudden badass. And they're really hammering home with this because they've turned him into, like, a muscly jock. I don't know why, but they have. But here, anyway, I was terrified of pretty much everything. He said, germs, the dark, non-organic snacks. And then all of a sudden, we were up against actual dinosaurs. Luckily, Bingers! found an unlikely ally in a baby ankylosaur he named Bumpy. Bumpy is my best friend. She helped me face my fears and see how much I had to contribute to the group. We'll have to see if the camp's office can make an exception for Bumpy as Ben gets ready to start college in the fall. And Yaz, the track star and her team, Yasmina Fadula, went from a national track star to Nublar 6 survivor in the span of months. And the aftermath hit her particularly hard. I was used to feeling helpless before. I would just push through to the finish line no matter what. Nublar made me realize you can't win all your races alone. She credits her relationship with fellow survivor Sammy Gutierrez as a major source of support. I've been going through a lot of anxiety since coming back, and Sammy's been there constantly. I want to show her I can be the strong person she sees in me. There should be one more. There should be Brooklyn. But if we take a close look at Kenji's picture, there's something here that isn't on the rest of them. <laughs> It's the torn out page of what I presume is Brooklyn. Again, a little bit of an in sort of universe hint to, oh, there's something untoward going on here. This mystery around uh, Brooklyn. I, I think Brooklyn and her, what was it? Uh, Brookenders or? Brooklanders, that was it. That's what you called them. <laughs> Brookenders? No, Brooklanders, that's right. So we see that Brooklyn has been attacked by an Allosaur and we can presume it's the same Allosaur that was in Battle of Big Rock. It's having a rivalry with Darius. And perhaps that's the reason why Darius has this, you know, history now. It's like the, the ultimate rival, this Allosaur, because it killed, killed Brooklyn. It's, you know, it maybe killed the Pachyrhinosaurus he was working on at the Battle of Big Rock, God knows. Anyway, let's get on to the Brooklyn plot. So our first introduction of what appears to be the villain of this franchise is this, and it's a close-up shot of a guy who's wearing glasses that are yellow tinted. He seems to be holding, I think it's a white phone, but it's in the evening, so it makes it look pink. Otherwise, I'd be like, oh, it's Brooklyn's phone. But he says that we've got a problem. It's put in a menacing light, and you know, it seems to be this guy's the villain, he's contacting his higher-ups. Now, who could this person be? Just after Ben says that he needs to get in touch with the rest of the gang to protect them, we see the van go past this sign. And it seems to appear to have two dinosaurs on the left, a brown one and a green one. And on the right could be that same guy wearing yellow glasses. And maybe we didn't really see if he had any facial hair, but the skin tone seems to match as well. Where are they going? Well, I think this could be the introductory shot of Sammy's Ranch. Why do I think that? Well, if you look at the light, it looks as if the sun is setting. And if we move to Sammy's actual shot where we see her, it is in the evening. Now here she's looking a bit like, I don't know, badass or a bit menacing. And I think that's just the way they're introducing her. Now, if you remember from Camp Cretaceous, she was kind of a villain, but not really. She was coerced through uh, Manticorp, Kenji's dad's corporation, to be a spy. I'm here to spy for a company called Manticore. But she's had links in the past to the villain side or the villain arc of the overarching story. And that is exactly the same light as is shown 
with the main antagonist here. Could it be possible that in Camp Cretaceous we had Kenji's dad being the villain, and in this one we have Sammy's dad being the villain? It'd be a bit weird if they just make all the dads bad guys. Possibly another reason why they go is because, of course, Sammy has a ranch. Bumpy may be living on the ranch, that's why Ben's there too, but it's also the introduction of the dark side of the plot. You know, the sun setting, we've got mysterious people arriving, and also at night in the trailer is when we see the Atrociraptors as well. I think what they do is they sneak into Brooklyn's place at night. I think after the sun sets, maybe they, they went to Brooklyn's place or something like that. And that is where Sammy, of course, is the one who says she finds the map that Brooklyn left. Ironic that. Hmm, I don't know. Can we trust Sammy? But after breaking into Sammy's house, I'm assuming, finding the map, they end up following the coordinates and that's when they discover all these dinosaurs being shipped somewhere. I feel as though they're not gonna go back with Biosyn. We saw the end of Biosyn in Dominion. I think Biosyn's done. It was a last nod to the, the franchise to tie everything together. It was always like, it was Biosyn. They, they've had their chance. It broke down with Dodson and there's no more. We've seen the Camp Cretaceous has implemented Manticorp in the past. You know, a new corporation, a new bad guy. And I feel like this may be another one. Maybe we'll get to see some other characters come back. Uh, Sayona Santos, if you remember, was the one who could control the Atrociraptors with a laser pointer. Possibly, we also see another villain who blows a whistle, which seems to get the attention of the Atrociraptors. So it's possible that maybe that is maybe Sayona Santos. I'm not too sure. It could even be Brooklyn. Possibly. Maybe she couldn't letting them know where she was, so she had to leave this cryptic message and a, and a map that led them to it. I'm not too sure. We've seen in the past Brooklyn's been the one to follow on leads and investigations, so this is definitely her uh, area of expertise. And sorry, that's not all. Sukumimus is making its long overdue debut in any sort of Jurassic media. I mean, apart from Jurassic World Evolution, even back in 2015 it was put on the website and then it just never appeared. But finally, we're getting some sort of Sukumimus looking creature. It, it seems to be sporting the colors of the raptors from uh, Trespasser, which is very odd. A, a little nod, I think, to anyone who knows that sort of pattern. But yeah, anyway, Sukumimus is here too. So in summary, basically we have Brooklyn sends a video or has a live stream that gets sent to Darius where she gets ambushed or attacked or killed by an Allosaur. Darius thinks it's his fault. Ben tells him it's not. They end up going to try and get the rest of the new blob six, I guess five now, together to find out the mystery of who's trying to hunt them down. They go to Sammy's ranch to meet Bumpy because we see a little corner of Bumpy there. And while there, we get introduced to Sammy's dad or possibly just someone who works with Sammy who is linked to the underground organization of the illegal smuggling of dinosaurs and all that jazz, who rings him up, says we have a problem because he's seen that these guys are clucking onto what's going on. They end up going to Brooklyn's house, breaking in, finding a, a map, while also being pursued at the same time by the Atrociraptors led by this organization. They follow the map, they go to a weird island, they find lots of uh, crates of dinosaurs that have been smuggled, a black market per se, and before we know it, the rest of the plot happens. But we don't know what th that is, because at this point in time, that is all that the trailer gives us. Anyway, guys, leave your thoughts and comments. Am I right about this Sammy plotline? Possibly somebody she's working with being a bad guy? I don't know. Who is the mysterious whistleblower for the Atrociraptors? Could it be Brooklyn? Maybe she's turned coat and she's a bad guy. I don't know. Anyway, at this point in time, it's all lovely, juicy speculation. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, and until next time, I'll see you guys later. Oh, bye-bye.